Recently, I got a chance to talk to Bay Rate, the man who was formerly behind the Source filmmaker, and more known for his work at Weta on Lord of the Rings. Now that he's ex-Valve, he wants to get more involved in the community, but has many other obligations to take care of first. But after a quick Google Hangout with him and a couple others, we managed to learn a bit about the back end of the Source filmmaker. Today I'm going to teach you about the undocumented blend shape editor, and how we can use this to create corrective shapes for the Source engine's hardware morph system. Before we start, let me warn you by saying this system is very different than most blend shape editors. It's mostly based in real time and you don't create a normal flex table. You're going to want to make sure that you also keep backups as you can mess up your base mesh and have to do a lot of reworking to get it back. I've ran into this problem before and it sucks. Make sure that before you save or close Maya, close the actual blend shape tools so that all temporary memory is put back into the model as it runs off its own runtime info. Also, you should have moderate experience with Maya. I'm not here to teach you basic modeling 101. You need to know what you're doing to use this thing. Alright, to start, we're going to open up the Blend Shape Editor by clicking the Valve tab. You should see this at the top of your screen near the right if you loaded the plugins through the Run Maya scripts and SDK tools slash Maya. Select the Blend Shape Editor, and a window will appear. Now, it's going to say no meshes selected. This is normal, don't worry, it just means that we'll have to select it ourselves. So, we're going to create a sphere. We're going to leave it as is and modify it so that it has some strange blend shapes. On the blend shape editor with the sphere selected, hit edit selected at the bottom right corner. Now, at the top of the blend shape editor, you're going to see editing P sphere 1. This is our sphere, so so far so good. So, I'm going to hit the little bubble next to base on the editor for safety. This is self-explanatory as a base or default position that our object is at. If you make any changes before you start blend shaping, you're going to want to hit overwrite so that you see the base is overwritten. If I overwrite this, you're going to see confirmation in the script editor down here saying overwrote delta base. Now we'll create a blend shape. Hit add on the blend shape editor and type in test 1. Select the bubble next to the box for test 1 so that our blend shape is selected for overwriting. Let's go into face mode and select some faces for editing. Whatever you select doesn't matter for this tutorial, however it is suggested that you follow along and figure out how to apply it to your own work. Don't mind if it looks bad either. This is just a test. In hindsight, you should probably work without soft select on, but it doesn't matter. We're going to go back to base and create our second flex. Select the face loop on the top so you have something else to move. Create a new delta by hitting add and typing in test2. I'm going to pull this one up to create this volcano looking thing. Again, you can create whatever you want, just follow the actual functionality of the tutorial and apply it to your situation. Select Test 2's bubble and hit Overwrite. Now, if I hold Shift, you'll notice that whatever delta you hover over is highlighted and is automatically previewed to you. Clicking on these will select it. Now we have two flexes called Test 1 and Test 2. Let's try exporting this to source using the DMX Export Manager in the Valve tab. I'm going to type in test underscore ball for my asset name and Casey for my subdirectory. I'm going to also give it a blank material. Now I'll save the project and compile the model. Click yes to create a QC file automatically. And your model will be compiled instantly. Hit view on the export manager to open this up in HLMV. Now, it's a simple ball with a basic material on it, and if we hit the flex tab, and use the drop down menus to select our flexes, we can turn them on at the same time. So now, we've got this paracel type thing. The reason this happens is because of the way Maya and Source handle flexes. If I go back into Maya, you'll see that I've selected some vertices that are shared within the two flexes. But let's say that I wanted to create a smooth curve, but still keep the shape between the two. Normally, this would take a lot of hacking methods and modifying the two flexes completely. Source and DMX, however, have support for corrective shapes. Correctors are the way of giving power back to the artist by allowing them to create shapes that will be enabled after certain flexes are ticked. These are designed by the artist and are run through a special program in your bin folder called DMX Edit. I'll explain this guy later, but what he basically does is tells the DMX and therefore the engine to run this hidden flex and make your flexes look like how you want them to look. 
So let's say that I wanted to make an, oh I don't know, a smooth curve instead of an outward parasol shape when they are both enabled. I'm just going to create the shape I want here by dragging them both to the side in the blend shape editor. For single flexes, you can only make changes by moving on the x-axis, and y is for blending between the two flexes. If you want, you can use this to blend between the two shapes by using the average vertices slider while having the verts you want to average selected. Usually though, you'll just want to create the shape you want manually. Now I've created my curve. I'll create a new flex called, and this is important, test1 underscore test2. This underscore is what tells DMX Edit that this is our corrector for shape A and shape B. You can hook this onto as many flexes as you want, so you could have shape X understroke shape Y understroke shape Z, and so forth. And I've seen it go up to 5, so I don't know what the limit is necessarily. So I'm going to go ahead and compile this now, and we're going to see something noteworthy. So we've compiled with Studio MDL. And when I go to the Flexes tab in HLMV after refreshing, I will now see Test1, Test2, and Test1 dash Test2. Strange, right? Even more, if I actually go and apply the two flexes to each other, nothing new happens. And Test1 dash Test2 just causes problems. This is because we did not run through DMX Edit, and we also didn't export it manually. So we're going to want to go into our content directory in Common, Source Filmmaker, Content, your mod. And your mod could be user mod, it could be elements, it could be whatever you're working on. And you want to find your model. In my case, it's in kc slash testball. For this tutorial, I've included two files that are very important to the workflow. You're going to want to create a folder named scripts right next to parts and drop test understroke ball dot lua into it and name it accordingly to what you have in your project. Double click this file and open it with any text editor. I'd suggest Notepad++ and also getting the QC reader for later. Now, inside this file are three lines and some commands. The first line reads vs.setGame. This will set what mod you're working in, i.e. TF movies, user mod, elements, etc. And where the file will compile to. Load loads the DMX into DMX edit, and save saves the DMX after it's gone through DMX edit. I save under test ball SFM to differentiate the sources and the final. Note that this works off of where the files are run from, and not where the Lua file is technically. So if I'm running from a batch file in test ball, not scripts, then we'll use path slash instead of dot dot slash path slash. Let's go ahead and run the DMX through DMX edit using the script. I'm using an all-inclusive batch script that runs the DMX through all the important steps, and I've included this as well. Place it in your main directory next to the QC, and set up the paths to your QC and Lua files. Once you're ready, run the batch script. Now go into HLMV and refresh the model. What's this? It's still not working. This is because of how Maya handles the naming conventions of objects. It does not allow underscores for objects or blend shapes, so we need to export with special parameters in order for it to work. Go back into Maya and use export selected to export the model DMX. Make sure it overwrites test ball and not test ball SFM. Now go into the script editor and copy the command you just ran, which should start with vs DMX IO. Paste this into the script editor and make sure you're in mel mode and type in dash ufc into the command, somewhere before dash file name, and execute it. Now, run the batch script and refresh HLMV. Now, get ready to watch some magic. Pew! This is a simple introduction to how corrective shapes work in SFM. We will soon go over more advanced topics and talk about how they can be practically used in faces, and then go over how it's applicable to HWM and why it's so important to the system. I hope this also gave you a look at how to use Valve tools to make your own custom assets for SFM. As information comes to us, we will continue to make tutorials for it.
Go to the Source Filmmaker section of Facebunch for more tutorials on different hidden topics, such as procedural bones, which was discovered by my friend Revzin recently, or displacement maps, discovered by my other friend Neri Guman. Keep on creating, friends.